Okay, we know it's a, it's a big, it's a kind of uh, uh, difficult time now because everyone is, uh, you know, a bit sleepy. You've drunk all this beer, all these these three days, so it's really getting uh, kind of tiring. And I'm sure half of you at least already know K2. So I'll try to you know go f for the basic stuff very fast, and then I'm going to show you K2 on 1.6 Joomla 1.6, which is basically you know what most people have been asking for the past uh, couple of months. So uh, starting with K2. Well, actually, before we start with K2, <laughs> let's talk about uh, Joomla for a second. Uh, Joomla, as you know, has revolutionized uh, web content publishing uh, across uh, the la well, almost the last 10 years. And if you count the Mambo days inside, um, we all know that uh, Joomla has made it possible for many people to easily set up websites and um, have their clients uh, manage them very easily. But there are some downsides that have uh, come up with the years. And uh, the facts uh, that we have to consider is that uh, Joomla does so its age. It's, it's around for, uh, for almost a decade, and the most essential part of uh, Joomla, the content, is almost the same. If you see the evolution uh, since uh, Mambo 4.5, to Joomla 1.6, we basically don't have anything new uh, in terms of uh, content features. And uh, we, we, we were waiting for Joomla 1.6 to add some things, some new things like comments, tags, and all that, but that didn't happen. Of course, uh, the competition is Way, way up front compared to, to Joomla. Uh, not in terms of uh, flexibility and framework and all that, but in terms of the things that end users see in the front end. And that is those, uh, those systems like Drupal and WordPress, they have more social features integrated. Um, they have, uh, they've, been, they've had like nested level categories for ages now. So Joomla does so its aids. It does so its uh, disadvantage uh, towards the systems uh, in terms of uh, of the end use the end, the features that end users uh, uh, make make use of. But that that being said, it doesn't mean that Joomla is not uh, cannot be compared to Drupal and WordPress. Uh, if you if you see the the framework, if you if you see Joomla from the framework aspect, it's a lot more powerful compared to to other systems, and this is why it's it's so popular, and it's uh, so easier for new newcomers to get in and be able to uh, create modules and plugins uh, within a few days. Now K2 is uh, the component that basically closes this content gap uh, with uh, what you know modern uh, trends uh, demand and uh, what the competition has. What is K2? K2 is a content component for Joomla. We think of um, uh, we, it, it's a given now that uh, there are specific components that do a, sp a certain job within the Joomla community. For example, Virtuomart is like the de facto uh, component for doing e-commerce. But there was never a uh, component that would actually do the same right thing exclusively for the content. So this is what K2 is doing. It's, uh, it's, like, uh, the, the, it's like Joomla's uh, content the way it should be. So I'm going to go now to the features of K2 rapidly. Um, as many of you already know, K2 organizes content in nested level categories, even in Joomla 1.5. Uh, we have uh, all the social elements that you would find in other uh, competing uh, CMSs, like comments, tags, uh, extra field systems, uh, a system for extra fields like the CCK system in uh, Drupal. We have uh, item images, videos, galleries, attachments, and a very powerful plugin API to extend the content. K2 
was actually built with uh, multi-author environments in mind. Uh, it's, it's got a very versatile front-end ACL system which allows you to create groups of uh, uh, authors and assign them to specific categories with specific rights and all these people can input content from the front-end to your website. So that does solve uh, partially the ACL problem that Joomla has had for many years. And uh, now we're, we're in a great position to say that now that Joomla 1.6 is released and it's, ha it's got its own ACL system, we can combine those two in uh, the, the, the best example, the best result uh, that we can imagine in terms of content flexibility. The front-end editing is Ajax-based. Uh, it, it's, it's very easy for people, for authors, to manage their items or moderate their comments if we're doing uh, author blogs. Uh, the profiles, the author blogs that I mentioned, are automatically created. Uh, we have, uh, when we see an, an article and uh, we have the author name, the author name is linked to, uh, uh, its, uh, to their own page. We got some modules, very few modules, and some have been uh, uh, quite surprised why we have so many little modules. But the idea is that we want uh, as few as possible, which are easy to extend as much as possible. So it's just five modules in the front end to bring uh, basic stuff like uh, display items and lists, or videos, or comments, or tags, and so on. One of the uh, cool things in K2 is that it's got very good search capabilities. And uh, not only that, we've also integrated uh, Google Ajax search. So if you have a very big website with thousands of articles, uh, you can combine the, the, the power of Google, of Google search within your website. K2 is also a, a joy for template uh, designers. It's, uh, it's probably one of the easiest extensions to install and set up. And uh, we've made it like uh, uh, our mission to be able to have as simple as possible template overrides so that it's easy for people to understand what, where is, what is where. And we've, uh, been, uh, we have comments in the code so that it's easier for anyone, even for newbies, uh, to understand how to override uh, content layouts in, in K2. K2 also solves one problem that is uh, that has plagued uh, uh, Joomla for many years. It's the the so-called menu item ID headache. When you're when you're in uh, say you're in a page and uh, you're you're viewing an article and you have a link. Let's 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 just say that we have a Joomla article, not K2, and you have a link to the category of this article. If you click on that link, you'll uh, move to the category page, and this page will inherit the menu item ID, as we say, from the previous page. Now, this causes problems because even if, if you want to do extended overrides, like have different layouts for different categories, different styles, uh, this just can't happen with uh, with Joomla. Not even with 1.6. Of course, in 1.6, we have these uh, new uh, tools like the sub-templates and all that, but that doesn't really work as intended by uh, designers. What we have done is um, we've, uh, uh, we've, gone, we've, we've gone out of this way that Joomla has been thinking for so many years, and we uh, separate uh, what is seen on the front end differently uh, we do not uh, we do not have all these parameters to control what's what is shown where in the front end in the menus we have them in the component so if you have a category that has set for example that's been set to show four articles one below the other then this is how this category is always going to show no matter how you, uh, uh, you no matter what menu item you link to it or not we also have one master CSS file just to hold things together and uh, be able to play nice with most templates. And uh, like I said, the MVC, the MVC overrides are very easy to use. You just copy. Uh, it's, not, it's not that they're just they're, they're, they're very good uh, commented and structured and so on, but it's just one folder that you have to just copy from the component and paste within your template. 
And we're extending this um, templating thing in modules as well, because we offer uh, module sub-templates. What that means is that you can have uh, the same module displaying items from uh, different categories uh, in copies, but with different layouts, completely different layouts, and without you needing to do any you know, weird stuff with uh, CSS. In this, uh, in this, in this version, uh, in these two versions, we've kept the, the, the interface as familiar as possible with K2, with uh, sorry, with Com Content, the default uh, component for uh, within Joomla for content. And uh, if you use K2, uh, it feels like uh, you've used it before from the from the very first moment. Uh, actually, the, the lists and all that uh, have everything positioned in such a way that it doesn't make the user or your client uh, feel uncomfortable when using it. And we've kept that in uh, as many places as possible. Uh, of course, the item edit form. So, I've told you about the features of K2. What can I build with K2? actually anything, you can build anything, and uh, that, that was the, the, the main goal from start. We can have uh, from small to massive news portals with uh, uh, dozens of authors, their blogs, comments, tags, anything. Uh, we can have any type of catalog, like products, documents, downloads, uh, portfolios. We've even created a plugin called K2 Mart, which can synchronize virtual products to K2. And so you can use K2 as catalog, which is easy to style, and uh, just use the cart features from Virtumart. So this just this little plugin just extends the catalog uh, capability of, of K2 one step further and actually makes it a uh, very good e-commerce solution. We can use K2 as a knowledge base, uh, directory listing, even a sitemap. Why should you use K2? Well, uh, not because K2 is right now the de facto content component in the Joomla community, but um, it's uh, really easy to use and easy to extend, and the community has seen that and has embraced K2 uh, almost, uh, well, a little, a little over than the last uh, two years. So we now have more than a half a million downloads since March 2009 when we uh, launched K2. That's a massive number if you think about it because people who are going to use K2 are people who want a lot more from Joomla. Uh, maybe for a basic corporate website, K2 may be overkill. In my, in my opinion, it's not because it's easier to style. And um, so people have seen that and have embraced uh, uh, K2 and actually have you know, stopped even using com content uh, and having K2 as their default content solution. Other good things about K2 is that it's supported by all major template clubs. We have seen more than 200 K2 related extensions in the Joomla extension directory. We have more than 20 languages supporting it. Uh, thousands of websites using it. Many websites are very high traffic. Other websites have been awarded, even here at Jane Beyond, this year and last year. This year, for example, we had uh, uh, some nominees, European Democracy, the High Court of Australia, Gorillas. Gorillas won the, the award for uh, best corporate website as well. There are many, many websites now that use K2 because they take their content seriously. We have a big uh, community. I think it's like uh, 12,000, uh, yeah, it's at 9,000 high level. It's around 12,000 high level K2 users now. What we like about K2, and then uh, I'm going to move to show you K2 on 1.6. We have a few uh, like hidden gems in K2, like you can easily create a multi uh, a multi structure category uh, tree very easily, very fast. Uh, we utilize this thing that we call um, category templates. What that means is that you can create a category template 
pre-assign some parameters and then use this category as a template for its children or for any other category. So if you're doing, for example, a uh, product catalog and you have like nine, nine levels deep categories and like a few thousand products, uh, but you know that the layout is going to be the same since the, uh, from, the, from the master category, you can set up everything on the master category and all the children categories can inherit this styling. So it's very fast to set up a website. Uh, beyond extra fields, we use the K2 plugin API, which is a very simple system actually. And it extends uh, K2 with some plugin events. And you can have plugin events, uh, you can have plugins that extend both the backend forms and the front end. So you can pretty much make, pretty much extend K2's forms in any way you like if you have a little bit more knowledge on uh, K2 plugin development and, uh, sorry, Joomla plugin development. K2 also gives an emphasis on performance. Uh, with, um, to give you an idea, uh, if you compare Joomla with uh, just a couple of components, like one component for comments and one for tags, and then side by side use K2 for that, you'll see that there's an immense, immense uh, difference in the performance. K2 operates a lot faster, and it does that because uh, everything is uh, so well integrated that uh, we don't have any uh, extra queries, any redundant queries, and so on. And it's our goal from version to version to significantly improve the performance of K2 as much as possible. That being said, we've also have, we also have an extended caching layer in K2, which uh, solves some uh, problems with Joomla that's, that's also plagued Joomla for many years. For example, if you, have, if you have a community of users and you allow them to log in, uh, Joomla's cache will be turned off whenever any user logs in. But with K2, we mitigate that by uh, still allowing to cache a few things. Actually, many things. So this, this is a, a performance improvement for any site. And last but not least, uh, if you base your content within K2, it will be definitely a lot easier to migrate it from 1.5 to 1.6 and so on. So um, <clears throat> to wrap things up with this uh, introduction, uh, what you're going to see for K2 in the future is uh, even more performance improvements. Uh, we're going to improve the user interface a lot. It's Like I said, it's been two years now that we're following the, the Joomla pattern. Uh, but it's, uh, now that K2 has a very big user base, it's time to try for new things things that won't care existing uh, uh, Joomla article users, but uh, are small, they, are, they are small details that can improve the workflow uh, when, when doing content with K2. Other things that we're adding from version to version is uh, more extra field types. Um, we, we, uh, we get the feedback from the community, what people want. We, we, uh, evaluate all that, and uh, if, if it's a reasonable addition, we add it to the core. And of course, that does never require any, for example, database uh, uh, table alterations or, uh, or similar, uh, uh, you know, big, big changes to the, to the uh, table schemas of uh, K2. What's coming in probably version 3 is uh, multiple versioning, uh, multiple, sorry, categorization. That will make uh, K2 even better for creating catalogs and assigning product to multiple categories. Um, we also got content versioning coming. This is a feature that uh, is found in WordPress and, uh, and in Drupal extensively. And uh, we, we plan to add this as well so that it, serious publications based on K2 or, or a news website can have the tools uh, that they require to properly manage their content. And of course, little details like better image handling and uh, more layouts in the front end, like uh, uh, layout. when I'm talking about layouts, I mean uh, uh, what you see in the front end, like category listings, um, uh, user listings, and so on. These are stuff that, we, that we're constantly going to be adding to make it more feature-rich. Uh, feature 
this this presentation is going to be on slides uh, when it's uh, when we get back to Greece. So uh, I'm just outlining a few uh, websites that are uh, different or uh, we've th they've had an additional customization with K2. What you'll notice that these sites have in common is that they they don't look like Joomla. So it's uh, people uh, that see these websites, uh, they don't understand that they're Joomla. And uh, I'm saying that because, not, not because actually most uh, Joomla websites use templates so that, you know, they look like, but it's, it's the way the content is so, sp uh, so, uh, so minimal in Joomla that it's easy to spot a Joomla website. With K2 you can do many things and it's, m people uh, find it hard to believe that it's, uh, it's based on K2 and Joomla. So let's see K2 now, K2 in 1.6. Since the since the content migration from uh, yeah yeah I know I know <laughs> um, I'm just I'm just preparing the the, the demo sites uh, as you know one point there's a there's an upgrade uh, a migrator from uh, 1.5 to 1.6. So. Okay, so the projector won't play nice with us, but uh, I'm going to try and show as much as possible. Yeah. So, uh, this is a stock installation of uh, Joomla 1.6. You can see the, the basic uh, template with, uh, <coughs> with a default uh, sample data installed. You can, uh, K2 version 2.5 is the version that's going to support Joomla uh, 1.6 and it's uh, currently in a testing phase. We plan to release it in about two weeks, uh, a little bit before Joomla Day Greece 2011. Uh, but it's, it's, it's fully operational in uh, 1.6 now, but there are some things that we need to iron out. So I've uh, just, uh, like I said, I just installed Joomla with uh, the default sample data. I went to the extension manager, grabbed the latest K2 SVN. You can download that from getk2.org and install. Now, uh, I just redid that before, so we've, uh, I've already imported uh, content from uh, Joomla 1.6. So, uh, <coughs> so basically, this process is already done. And as you can see, items have been moved exactly like with, with 1.5. These are the things that need some ironing, for example. Okay, but it's it's basically 
identical to 1.5. This is also another good thing that you don't you don't see changes in the form. So if you plan to upgrade your website from 1.5 to 1.6, your clients will probably not notice. So. Uh, We got the demo site earlier. We were testing. Uh, okay, so this is this is the the default demo site for K two. It's. Uh, Anyway, so th this is the default, uh, this is the demo site for K2, it's on demo get k2.org and um, we took this earlier, this website, and uh, we tried to port it to 1.6 using the J-Upgrade Migrator, it's the component that Joomla recommends uh, for people to use if they want to uh, port their sites from 1.5 to 1.6. So without changing anything in K2, without changing anything in our template, we got this, which is basically, it's, it's very close to, to the original one, if you see. So is the content. Now, this upgrade process is not, is not so good, to be honest, because uh, it's, uh, of course, it's, it's, it's still, uh, it's understandable that it's a better, better component, but uh, <clears throat> if you're going to, if you want to, if you have a 1.5 website and you're going to, and you want to go to 1.6 for an existing site, let's just say that don't do it for now. Uh, not because uh, 1.6, well, K2 is not ready for 1.6, it's, the code is the same, it's, uh, there are just small changes to adapt the ACL features of 1.6 and uh, uh, yeah, basically just that. But if you want to go for a new site, you can definitely use K2, ACL is fully working for the backend as, as it's implemented by Joomla by default. And we still have the, K2, the front end features, the front end ACL features uh, that exist in 1.5. So uh, we, we took actually this decision because it was, uh, uh, it's actually a lot easier to set up K2's ACL for the front end. So uh, either way, AC, the, the Joomla 1.6 ACL basically solves problems in uh, content management in the backend, so who, who is able to log in and do what on your Joomla website. Uh, we've, we've added these features in K2 for 1.6, but we haven't changed how the K2 front-end editing and ACL in the front-end works. So what that means is that basically your sites, if they're migrated, they're just going to play, you know. And uh, if you start a new website, everything is as you used to do it in uh, uh, 1.5. So uh, <clears throat> that was pretty much it. <laughs> You, uh, I'm, I'm sure most of you know K2. I mean, I know the faces here, so uh, I'm just going to accept any uh, questions if you have uh, for K2 and 1.6 or K2 in general. So. The custom fields. So the the question the question is that uh, a client of you uh, you wanted to add some uh, new uh, custom fields for K two. 
custom field types within K2. Uh, this is not possible at the moment. I mean, we've uh, we've covered most uh, situations like uh, text areas, text fields, uh, drop downs, links, and all that, uh, which are like the 95 percent of things that you would require to build additional uh, content lists. But aside that, uh, you cannot create on your own extra field types. This is something that we, we, we are adding in the core uh, from version to version. But what you can do is you can actually uh, create a plugin if you, if you if you have the basic knowledge to create uh, a plugin in Joomla. It's very easy to create plugin for K2 and just to give you an idea of what you can do with plugins okay, so this website is completely based on uh, K2 but uh, this this is this is one of the websites that we actually push to the limits with uh, plugins so this thing the catwalks are basically K2 just K2 and what we did is that um, no extra field type could do this we wanted to have multiple categories, uh, sorry, multiple galleries and uh, multiple videos. So this is a K2 item, okay? You can probably identify it by those elements. And uh, this was impossible to get on uh, either K2's image gallery or uh, the extra fields. So, what we did is we created a plugin which added those fields that we want, and the fields you are basically defined in XML files, like you do uh, to, when you're setting up parameters for plugins or modules. So, after that, it's just Joomla. We just have the, the events, and you can do anything you want. And the good thing is that uh, with some JavaScript, you can even, which I think. I think we've added the JavaScript to 2.5. You can even have plugins execute in the backend forms on specific categories only. So in this uh, website, uh, you won't see the fields to add additional uh, galleries when you're not in the fashion category. So this uh, this makes the system less. There's less clutter in the system uh, to manage it. Other questions? Yeah. Well, lots of things actually. Three um, B uh, design, three B web design from the UK have done a cool plugin that uh, basically takes the image, compresses it using Yahoo's Massive service, and brings it back to K2. So this could be something that could be in the core of K2. Uh, that that means that you can use an external service somehow and uh, compress JPEG images even better because uh, the libraries that exist in servers are not that good as, for example, uh, the algorithms within Photoshop. So if you export an image, if you, if you convert a JPEG image from one dimension to the other, uh, you won't always get the utmost best results with uh, some PHP library. So we plan to add stuff like that, or we plan to add support for uh, PNG images, transparent images, so you can do more cool stuff uh, on the article page, the item page. Um, we plan, uh, one, one thing that is very required is the ability to somehow reprocess the images with K2 on a migration or on a new design. So you have a K2 website that has images on its articles that are like 500 pixels wide and you, you change the design. The new design is now 700 pixels or, or smaller. What we do now is that we HTML resize those images so it, it still will look cool but okay, it's, if it's content images it's not, it's not bad.
Yeah. <laughs> naughty, naughty. <laughs> so, uh, okay, I won't close it. You can write whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, actually, I can't close it. It's uh, I, ha I have to to minimize the browser. So it's it's up to you to decide whether you're gonna look at this uh, lady or uh, Mr. Bremer's uh, tweets. So. <laughs> Any more? Uh, oh, this is for the next winter, so it's it's you know. Anyway, so uh, image reprocessing is one of the things that we'd like to add, and uh, better handling for uh, dimensions. The final thing is to be able to upload the image, have something like a selector, what which part you want to be uh, cut off and used. Like, for example, when you create your avatar on Facebook, your, your avatar on Facebook, and uh, that, you know, will, will just make K2 the, the best solution to handle content in any way when, when we're talking about images. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, it is possible. Uh, you certainly would have, what I would suggest is create a module. That could be a module that gets the, the location of the user and then queries the database in some way uh, to fetch results that uh, match you know, the distance to the, to the user. So uh, it's a uh, it's not actually a complex issue, but it's it's something that you can deal with. It's possible. Uh, let me let me rephrase that to make you feel more comfortable. If you had to do that with any other system, you would have to write a component. But with K2, you can easily have, for example, the coordinates put it inside the articles with an, uh, with the extra field system. So you already have the data to to query. So you don't have to create another component or anything. It's just a small module that uses. Uh, HTML5 or I don't know Google's uh, Google Maps API to you know do the the mathematics and define uh, which location the items the any way that correspond to the location of the user. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Are you planning on using Google Maps? Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, no, uh, we didn't add it in 2.5, but that's something that we could do. Yeah, it's very simple. But there are like four plugins already doing that. We have, like I told you, we have 200 plugins, uh, 200 extensions that are related to K2 already. So uh, this is a quite a big number if you think about it. So there are various uh, modules and plugins fetching content or extending K2's content one way or the other. You just have to to look for it. And the good thing is that uh, uh, you can actually search for K2 on the Joomla extensions directory. There's no problem now. They've uh, they have a, a better solution there. Any more questions? Yeah. What would you like to do? Because we can add we can add three or four functions in K2 and make it look like a forum as well. So that's that's actually competition. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. No. Uh, what we could do is uh, we could obviously uh, integrate avatars. So if you have a profile on uh, Kunena. Uh, we could pick up the avatar and the det the details. You know, I, I don't know. Can you can you have full profiles in Kunena, like your name? Uh, I mean, uh, like a small description uh, uh, URL and all that. Okay, yeah, we're doing all the already that for Community Builder. So, <laughs> okay, so uh, 2.5 will have a small Community Builder integration, meaning that if you have Community Builder installed 
uh, you can choose to use the avatars from Community Builder and all the links that point to author names will actually point to uh, Community Builder pages. And there, the Community Builder team will retrieve K2 items in the Community Builder profiles. So it's an integration like this, from one component to the other and back again. So this is something that we could do with uh, Kunena as well and NinjaBoard and all, all the firm solutions. Author, author pages, uh, author profiles, user profiles uh, in Kunena with the, 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 those users' uh, items from K2 within Kunena. And let's just say that in 2.5, it'll just be more complete, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Sorry, how I plan to use that, how? Yeah, yeah. View, viewing is controlled by Joomla. So if we want to add viewing capabilities, uh, we need to, to go a bit further. But this is something that we're looking at. Uh, what you're saying, uh, from what I understand, you're saying is that you want to have full ACL control of the front end using K2, right? OK, this is something that we plan to add. Uh, but there are things that we need to fix first or uh, you know, think about more carefully. Like, um, you know, we don't want to compromise performance, for example. And if we are to show a list of items that have been cast, we need to find a way to be able to break the cache in um, several parts so that they reflect different groups, because we're talking about viewing, okay? Oh, this is possible already. This is possible since 1.5. What we don't control is uh, we cannot lock categories from being viewed by specific user groups because K2 has its own user groups. We cannot control that in 1.5 uh, because it's uh, it's handled by uh, by Joomla. But in 1.6, a mix and match combination can can achieve that. So if you don't have any other questions, uh, I'd like to thank you. And, uh